Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Yasser Ahmed. So in this video, we will continue looking at the ICT, ICT um, paper on chapters. And we started looking at chapter four, networks and the effects of using them. So please check out the first part of this um, video where we looked at network and its uses. And then we looked at the difference between uh, wi uh, switches and hubs and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So we're now going to be looking at um, clouds and how it's used to store data. So you might be familiar with these um, clouds here. You've got OneDrive, you've got the iCloud, you've got Dropbox, and then you've got the Google Drive as well. So what can a cloud do for you guys? So it can allow for centralized data storage. Uh, one example of how I might use um, a cloud storage is when I take a picture on my phone, it's automatically going to be uploaded onto my cloud storage. So I've been using this for many years. And it's always nice to go back and have a look at your previous pictures. And the great thing about the cloud storage is I can access my cloud from different devices or I can share data from my cloud um, to other devices or to other users. So data can be accessed from any device and any location. However, an internet connection is required. And then the data, uh, when you do upload, the disadvantage would be the data is owned or the or the servers are owned by a third party. So obviously when you have your own data on your own device, then it's yours. But when you start uploading it, you lose that control. So you don't have that 100% control over that data. So how is data stored? So cloud storage uses remote servers to save data. And it could be your files, uh, business data, videos, or images. And how is data shared? So data can be accessed on multiple devices with an internet connection and files can be shared with different users. So it's more common now for people to be using Google Drives or cloud storage to be sharing files that could be accessed by multiple users at the same time and can be worked on at the same time. So what is the advantage of using cloud storage? So the capacity is huge, okay? Um, the capacity can be increased without adding physical devices. So for example, uh, I'm using Google Drive as an example to upload pictures. If I want to increase that capacity, there's no need to purchase um, another physical storage device. Um, I can increase my um, storage capacity online. However, it would come, there would be an expense. You'd have to pay for that. So the storage I have right now is subscription-based, so I pay X amount every month. It's not a lot, to be honest. And if I wanted to increase my storage limit, then I can obviously pay a little bit more to increase that. Data can be sent directly to and from the cloud from any computer device. Many people can share and access that data. And the great thing is the data is automatically backed up. But as discussed, um, you will lose um, the control of data as it's now controlled by a, a third party, so the storage provider. If you lose the internet connection, then a the cloud data cannot be accessed. Or sometimes you may be in the process of, of uploading data and, an, and it may not be saved properly because um, you, your internet connection dropped. So a reliable internet connection is required. It's a must. Um, you will have a subscription. Uh, sub let me say that again. You will have a subscription fee, ongoing costs when you are uploading data to your cloud. Uh, it's not a massive cost, to be honest. Um, and you may also purchase um, additional storage as well. So your cloud, the problem would be with your cloud, it could easily be hacked and celebrities have had their pictures leaked um, to the public or to the newspapers. And it may be a combination of reasons. Maybe one reason is you don't have a strong password and the data may be hacked by uh, another party. Okay, so let's have a look at some typical exam questions. Computers can store data in a cloud rather than using storage devices in a computer. Describe three benefits of storing data in a cloud. So the data can automatically be backed up, um, can be accessed from many devices, can be accessed anywhere where there is an internet connection, and many people can share access to the data. The drawbacks would be there's no control over the data security um, issues. Um, you would need internet connection. So no control means it's obviously once you upload into the cloud, you lose that 100% ownership of your data. Um, it's going to be controlled, managed by a third party. 
It may be more spent expensive in the long run due to a monthly charge, your subscription. And if the internet crashes during sending or receiving the data, then that data may be lost. Okay, so another exam question could be that this son produces uh, large complex diagrams on his desktop computer at home. He needs to be able to access the diagrams when he's at university. Even if reduced in file size, the diagrams would be too large to send using email. So describe in detail how he could transfer the diagrams from his home desktop computer to be able to access them at university without using additional hardware. So he can create a cloud storage account. Okay, ensure sufficient storage is available in the cloud account. Log into the account at home, upload the diagrams from his home computer to the cloud. At university, he can log into the cloud storage account and then download and open the diagrams. Okay, so now what we're going to be looking at is the intranet, uh, internet and extranet. So we'll start off with um, the internet because you all use the internet. And the internet is public, available to all users. It's basically a network of networks. It's global and has more information than the intranet or the extranet. extranet. So your typical use for the internet could be to view web pages, to send emails, sharing files, uh, maybe making voice communication, uh, video calls, video conferencing, playing online games, streaming, uh, video audio content, online shopping, banking, and so on. So that's the internet for you, okay? However, the intranet um, is in within one organization and is private. So when I used the int intranet for the first time, it was when I was at university and we'd have to log on to a web page, which made it private. And when I logged on, I was able to access content from my course. Um, I was able to receive my updated marks. Um, I was able to share communication with my lecturers or with people on the course. So the intranet, um, unlike the uh, internet, is um, managed and policed. So obviously, if you are using it inappropriately, then there might be some consequences. Um, the intranet has an extra layer of security, so the login would be required. Data found on the internet is more likely to be relevant, um, reliable, because it's going to be uploaded by, so in my case, by the university lecturers, so it's more reliable to my course. On the internet, you can access more content, but it might be outdated, it might be false. So why would you use an intranet? Maybe to view internal web pages. So for example, in school, university, in a business, uh, access internal communication like emails, instant messages between workers and a sharing of internal documents. So the intranet, you can log on and obviously you can find all of your resources for your, for your business, university, school in one place, rather than going to the internet and finding different content from different web pages. And what is the extranet? So the extranet is a network controlled by a company. It's restricted and private. It allows access for partners or vendors or suppliers. So, and it also allows access for authorized customers. So Amazon is a website where you can purchase goods online and it would have a dedicated extranet for suppliers and sellers. So. If you are a seller, you're selling goods onto Amazon, you may be part of the extranet. If you're suppliers, um, you may be also be part of the extranet. So it's basically an extension of the intranet, you could say, and it's subsections where certain people can, you know, gain access to content. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So both of these are private and restricted extranet and inter intranet. Internet is um, public and global for, um, oh, so it's global and available to all users online. Um, the extranet could be the, an extension of the intranet. Okay, and let's have a look at a typical exam question. So a company has an extranet. Okay, explain what is meant by an extranet. Um, so extranet is a network controlled by a company it's restricted, private, it allows access for partners, okay? So um, I'm just trying to think um, of another scenario apart from Amazon. So let's say um, the school, um, 
we have an intranet um, and on the intranet um, we have access to, for students we can also maybe give access to parents as well um, so they can see only specific parts um, from the internet. So it allows access for authorized customers. So here's the internet generally restricted to the employees of the organization. The extranet will be external and may also be accessed by customers of the suppliers or approved parties. And a typical exam question, differences between the internet and the intranet. The internet is a global network of networks. It's open to the public domain, whereas the intranet is private and normally within one organization. The intranet requires authentication to log on, which provides an extra layer of security. Information found on the internet will be more reliable and relevant than the internet because, um, so intranet, yeah, than the internet because the internet, intranet tends to be policed and managed. However, more information is available on the internet. So remember, intranet is pleased and managed. Uh, reliable course material may be uploaded if it's part of a university. Okay, the internet, obviously, you can get access to loads of information, but it may be outdated, uh, it may not be checked for anything. It may be incorrect data as well. Right, now let's have a look at uh, network types. And if you have an office or school, um, you may have a local area network. So local area network normally covers a small geographical area, maybe confined to one building within close proximity. And the local area network will consist of a number of computers and devices that are usually connected uh, to a switch, which is then connected to a router to provide internet connection. Now, a wide area network is a network that extends over a large geographical area. And a wide area network is often created by joining local area networks together so you can see you've got one local area network connected to another local area network and routers are used to connect local area net networks to form a wide area networks the most common example of a wider area network is the internet where networks are connected together and then we have a wireless local area network and this is a local area network that uses radio signals wi-fi to connect uh, computers instead of cables so, so you connect more computers um, using Wi-Fi instead of using cables. And in the wireless local area network, you'd have access points, which are connected to a wired network at fixed locations. And then these devices provide wireless connection to devices on the network. And it's more convenient to, to use wireless connections instead of running long wires all over buildings. So obviously, in some cases, you're renting a building and you may not have permissions to uh, drill holes to plug cables in certain parts of the building. So maybe it might be more convenient to have wireless access points to be able to connect more devices um, to the network. So describe the differences between the common network environments, local area networks, wide area networks, and wireless local area networks. So local area networks normally cover a smaller geographical area confined to, no, to one building perhaps. Wide area networks are lands that are, have been connected together with a router uh, to form wide area networks, basically. They normally cover a large, larger geographical area. The connection between local area networks could be with either cables or satellite signals. Wireless local area networks use wireless signals to connect devices. Um, access points are connected to wired networks, given access to additional devices on your network. And some typical exam questions. Uh, both the internet and the intranet are used for communication. Define the term um, internet and intranet. So the internet has public access. It is worldwide, okay? Made up of a vast collection of uh, networks. The intranet has private network, it's a private network which has restricted access used in companies and organizations. The internet is used to uh, share internal documents and emails. So the university or school that wants to share documents with uh, the students. And then you may have uh, multiple choice questions like this, where you have to tick, um, not multiple choice, ticking sort of questions. So tick 
which of the following statements apply to LANs, which apply to wide area networks, and which apply to wireless local area networks. So the internet is an example of this type of network, so that would be wide area network. This type of network is found in a building, but is connected without cables. So it could be wireless local area network. This type of network is used to transmit data between Europe and North America. So that would be wide area networks. And this type of building or this type of network is found in a building, but is connected with cables. So that would be the local area network. Okay, um, 4.2, what we'll do is we'll join you guys again in the next video to start with 4.2, okay? So 4.2, we'll be looking at security protocols, um, authentication over a network, okay? And yeah, it's going to be still, it's a long part, and then obviously network issues and communication. So please join me. In the next video uh, where we'll be looking at 4.2 probably we'll have to do that in two sections as well right guys please drop your comments below i hope this video was useful and helpful in your revision and i'll see you guys in the next video 4.2 take care please subscribe and i'll see you soon see you guys soon thank you bye bye